Boker Tov, Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. We're bringing you right back again, guys. This is a breaking story that we've been trying to share uh, from uh, Russian uh, news that we have uh, found. The tanks that are in Donbass uh, are right on the border of Donbass. They're Ukrainian Kiev uh, frontline tanks that are being brought up. This is what's caused Putin to go in a, in a tailspin trying to contact world leaders to get them to back off so that the region does not become unstable. I know some people would say you're fear-mongering. Some people would say, uh, you know, that this is, this is propaganda website. Let me assure you, without going into too much detail, I do have two friends that one passed part of the inner circle of Vladimir Putin as well as one that is currently still part of that circle. I have family that are Ukrainians in my own family. We have contacts in Ukraine. We have contacts in different parts of the world. Some thanks to the people that we have relationships by news, but especially by family, we're all over this part of the world here. Uh, we are citizens here as well. So we do know what's going on. We have seen the propaganda on both sides. Russia, no difference. We know that Russia uses propaganda as well, but we've also seen where the President Putin would come out and do something in response in the case like of the case of the 40 uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles that he said he was going to build. Then Obama tells the United States, well, we're going to send in new forces into Latvia, Estonia, and uh, Poland to build up because of what Putin is doing. Well, guys, we were the ones seeing the tanks going on the uh, railway cars before Putin ever said this. We were the ones that were watching the troop movement uh, here in Eastern Europe going over to Poland and Latvia and the other countries there before Putin ever announced what he was going to do in response to what NATO was doing led by the United States. There's a lot of things, guys, that you do not realize that's going on. That's why we work as journalists. Uh, you know, we do a lot of prophetic news as well, but we're doing this not to fear monger, but to try to get the word out. The video you're about to watch here in just a second, here with Vladimir Putin, this was one that Alex Jones really got to the front lines on uh, for people to let people know that we are in a dangerous situation. Putin is warning the journalists. My wife said here, right in front of this uh, video that you're about to watch here, listen to him speak every word in Russia. You have to, Russian, you have to understand, my wife grew up in communist Russia. She lived here under the Russian language fluently speaks it, understands it, writes it, reads it, everything. She said the translation on this document here is extremely accurate. She said he is saying what you are seeing written here. This is not propaganda. This is a fact. And I believe when I see the sincerity in what this man is trying to say, he's using the journalists to try to get to the people of the world, to warn the people of the world, hopefully, as he says, that you will go back to your leaders and demand answers, demand to, to get some responsibility, even like we see with Donald Trump. And I'm not here to support one candidate over the other. I definitely do not like Hillary Clinton. I believe she'll lead the whole world to hell in a handbasket, if, if you want to put it like that. But when it comes to Donald Trump, at least he's talking about making uh, peace with Russia. We need peace, not globalism. And we know that Putin has outright spoken against New World Order, says he knows this happening. Now, I know there's some that say, well, he's part of the elite and they this and that and everything. Okay, that's true. But I'll also tell you one thing, too. He started shutting down the Rothschild banks in Russia. Now, what do you think about some of these things here? I don't say the man's perfect. I know he's not perfect. But the point is, we're trying to prevent a global catastrophe. Let's go into what he says here. The Iranian threat does not exist, but NATO missiles defense system is being positioned in Europe. That means we are right when we said that the reasons are not genuine. They were not being open with us, always referring to the Iranian threat in order to justify this system. Always. See? Once again, they lied to us. All right? Now, let me just share something with you. My wife sat down right here. She, she went over this entire video. She knows that it's genuinely translated. Okay? Now the system is functioning, being loaded with missiles. As you, journalists, should know, these missiles are put into the capsules which are used in the Tomahawk long-range missile system. Okay. So these are being loaded with missiles that can penetrate territories within 500 kilometer range. 
But we know that technology is advanced, and we even know in which year the U.S. will accomplish the next missile. The missile will be able to penetrate distances up to 1,000 kilometers and then even further. This missile will be able, uh, excuse me, and from that moment on, they will start to directly threaten Russia's nuclear potential. All right, now let me just share something with you as well on this. My wife grew up in the Soviet Union. She's fluent in, in Russian, speaks it, she reads it, the whole works. This is not a joke, friends. And we're not here to warmonger or, or scare people. Let's finish. We know year by year what's going to happen, and they know what we know. And excuse me, they know that we know. It's only you that tell tall tales to you and buy it and spread it to the citizens of your countries. Your people in turn do not feel a sense of the impending danger. This is what worries me. How do you not understand that the world is being pulled into an ir irreversible direction? While they pretend that nothing's going on, don't you know to get how to get through to, to uh, excuse me, I don't know how to get through to you anymore. You know, guys, I don't, you know, as I watch him, and I'm not, a, I'm not an analyst, psychologi a psychological analyst or anything, but I can see from my own perspective, this man is concerned. All this rhetoric going around that, that Putin is out there and, and Putin is the guy that's starting everything and, and that, you know, and that this is only, the, the, the website I show you is only Russian propaganda. Guys, I see propaganda on both sides. And I, I am an American citizen. I love my country. But in, from the time that Barack Obama took office, our nation has gone spiraling downhill. And you have to, you have to acknowledge this. All right. I have family members here. I have family members that are Ukrainian. My father-in-law is a Ukrainian. Okay? I have contacts on the ground, both through news and through family as well. We see things going on. I have friends that are inner circle before and even now with President Putin. I stay on top of finding out what's going on, but I also try to find evidence. We have seen it ourselves. We have photographed military buildups. Many of them, the SAR NATO drills. But we've also seen where President Putin was accused of, of establishing 40 more new ballistic missiles because of uh, the response to the West. But Obama lies to the American public and says, we're sending in all these troops and heavy armored tanks and things like that because he's going to do 40 more inter -ballistic, continental ballistic missiles. Guys, let me tell you something. I knew it already. I had already seen all the stuff coming in to, to Latvia and Poland and had the evidence and proven, documented, that the United States did that before Putin said he was going to build the 40 ICBMs. The thing is, guys, we're being lied to. This is why Putin sat down with those journalists. He figures the journalists will tell the people that people in turn will talk and try to get some sense with the congressmen and senators and say, look what's going on. Look at Donald Trump. I don't say Donald Trump is the best guy, but at least he's willing to make a deal with uh, Putin and try to bring peace and restore some sensibility to the nation. I don't know if he's a New World Order guy. I have no idea. I can tell you one thing. Some people say, oh, Putin, he's part of the New World Order. Yes, he is part of the elite system in Russia. I'll agree with that. And everything, everybody else is in poverty. I'll agree with that. But one thing I can tell you about Putin, when he says he's a Christian, he don't say I'm a Christian with one mouth and say I'm a Muslim with another mouth, unlike the President of the United States, Barack Hussein Obama. All right? So, Kiev... The capital of Ukraine, Ukraine was a pro-Russian country until it was overthrown by a coup. Putin has at least enough love for his own people to try to protect him. Yes, he does cross in. I don't care if he says he doesn't. I've had the proof, and I've brought that out on him as well, that he has sent Russian forces in there to protect the Russian people in eastern Ukraine, just as he did with Crimea. They did the referendum, and they came under Ukraine. I have seen Ukrainian officials Official, the new prime minister even made this statement here. When they see that Ukraine has a better life than Russia, then they will want to come back. That's the diplomatic way to handle Crimea, not the way they're trying to do it now. But Petro Poroshenko is not interested in that. He's interested in drawing NATO into a war, and I think they're using him as a puppet. All right? Let's look. I want you to see this tank footage for yourself.
This is the video footage right here, guys, that I shared yesterday on live stream. Israeli News Live live stream as well as Israeli News Live on a quick take on our broadcast on YouTube. We're putting it here on the screen full size for you so you can see it for yourself. It is tank after tank after tank. You can call it a propaganda website. Some people try to do that. But you know what? At least Putin is, he had an emergency phone call. Uh, Brother Paul Begley on his channel said that Putin had an emergency meeting phone call with President Obama yesterday. I know he also talked with German Chancellor Merkel as well as the French Prime Minister uh, as well. Uh, Sarkozy, I believe. No, not Sarkozy. But, uh, but at, at this, in other words, the point is he's trying to bring about a stop in this escalation. Now, some people have even suggested, no, they're only going there because Russia already has a lot of forces in Donbass and Luhansk. Russia does go in there and tries to help the Russian people there. But if Russia wanted to take Ukraine, friends, do you think he couldn't do it? He would take it with no problem. But what is the issue here? The issue is this here. Russia sees all these tanks coming up on Donbass. He sees that his people are about to be massacred unless he does something about it. Unlike what Europe did to the Jewish people when Hitler was annihilating all the Jews, this man is willing to risk his entire country and go in there to protect, to go in there to protect the Russian citizens that were once part of Russia at one time. I have respect for him for that. He's not going to let his people be genocide. And some people say, oh, the NATO would never do that. Oh, yes, they would. I saw, I listened to it myself, the actual phone conversation that was intercepted by people that were speaking for the Ukrainian government at the time that said that I had, the lady says, I have friends with NATO, with the United States, and we will nuke and kill every Russian in this land. I have heard it with my own ears. We published it here for you. You should know it if you've listened long enough to our broadcast since the Ukrainian crisis began. All right, But he knows if he sends in his own tanks in response to what they're doing there to make it an even fight there, that is when NATO is going to pounce on Russia. And I believe NATO wants it to happen. All right, Now you're about to see on your screen, they're going to turn the camera around and you're going to see not just a dozen tanks come up, you're going to see tons of tanks. And they estimated about 40 tanks there plus armored personnel carriers there. But the cameraman's about to turn it around and you're going to see it for yourself and I'm going to freeze that picture for you so that you can see it for yourself. I want you to see what they built up. As he takes the last tank, he turns around and then suddenly there it is. Everywhere on the screen, tanks are lined up all the way across. He actually pans the camera just a little bit and it is amazing. What is there? You see, friends, Putin is trying to stop this war. And then we had the article come out on Vove World, .vn. NATO puts troops near Kaliningrad. July 6, Polish Defense Minister Anthony uh, uh, Mak Makrovich said four battalions of NATO command located in Poland, Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania will be located in the city of Elblag in northern Poland at a distance of 100 kilometers, which is about 65 miles, uh, from the Rus from Russian Kaliningrad, according to the Anthony uh, Makarovica, data battalion groups can counter the threat not only on land but also in the airspace. So it's not just troops, but it's also air forces as well. Well, why? Why Kaliningrad? Well, guys, here on your map, right here, Kaliningrad is that little tiny country in between uh, Lithuania and Poland. It is a Russian country. Russia has their naval force there. They've always had their naval force there. This is nothing new, all right? But they begin to build up forces here when NATO began to do all these huge exercises moving into Poland and all these areas here, blaming it on the Ukrainian crisis, and that's why they were doing it, all right? Here in Estonia, up here at the top, by the way, notice the blue and yellow on Ukraine. All right, I didn't make the map, it was already made that way, but when you saw the tanks coming through, the blue and yellow flags identifies it that it's Ukrainian tanks, right? Here in Estonia, at the top of your screen, Estonia is where our own friend, there on the ground at the Narva River, there's no place for 
you're on the Narva River with 100, approximately 100 tanks and armored personnel carriers, and St. Petersburg, it doesn't show it on the map, but it's right across there. Guys, come on, they're planning, they're planning some kind of a strike. And if this goes public, if we can get this to go viral, maybe we can stop it. Maybe somebody will, will you know, bust it and, and pull it off. And see, here it is, Donsk and Luhansk. This down here by Donsk is where Donbass is. This is where they're building up all the forces at, right? It's a little tiny small section next to Russia. No wonder why it's Russians living there. This was part of the Soviet Union at one time. All right? And right here, and see, my father is way up from up here close to Chernobyl. All right? Right in this area here is Russia. And the only thing Putin is trying to do is he doesn't want to see his citizens massacred. Okay, listen, Russian diplomat, another one. This came out yesterday. TASS News, TASS, extremely reputable news site. It is a Russian site. Implementation of the Minsk Agreement and buildup of Ukrainian forces near the contact line may mean that Kiev prepares for a military operation in Donbass. Russian diplomat suspects Kiev of preparing military operation in Donbass. Guys, this is not a joke. This is Moscow Times. Putin cancels all meetings for a week. Russian President Vladimir Putin has canceled all planned engagements for the rest of the week. Why? He's trying to deal with Obama. He's trying to deal with German Chancellor. He's trying to deal with the, British, uh, the French Prime Minister. He's trying to get the people to stop what they're doing before it spirals out of control. I said he's in his bunker, you know? And that's my personal observation. When he went missing back in 2014, I was the only guy that got it right. I know so because the insider sent me a letter and said, you got it right. He was preparing for war because he was expecting an attack on his own country. Why? He's not willing to do the New World Order. Putin has said it from his own lips. He's against the New World Order. That's a problem for globalists. And don't think that just because uh, uh, Britain leaves, uh, exits the EU, that that's not part of the plan. Yes, it is. And maybe Putin is part of the plan. I'm not saying he's not, guys. I'm just telling you, it's bad. And that's the article. I'm going to post it in the subject line right there. Moscow concerned with a buildup of Ukraine armed forces in Donbass. Uh, and by the way, the OSCE was not allowed where these tanks are at. They said it on that website. But right here in the article here, they were saying that, that it was. They were say, All they were saying were the troops themselves. Ukraine armed forces and volunteer battalions at the contact line, observers from the SMM and the OSCE. Security and cooperation in Europe. Also note escalation of the situation. It is clear that Ukraine forces are preparing a military operation, the ministry added. That's, that's straight from their mouth. Moscow hopes that German and French partners will be able to use their influence on Kiev to prevent a military scenario that may seriously destabilize the situation in the region. That's not someone trying to engage, that's someone trying to calm the situation down. And as I brought out here, Ukraine and Turkey have agreed to work together to return uh, Crimea. The word these shouldn't be in there, I tr translated it. This is actually, uh, this was on a Russian news source, but I found it originally on the Ukrainian website. Turkey will always support the territorial integrity of Ukraine, including that of Crimea. That was quoted directly from Erdogan. And in the one that was on the Ukrainian website, they had already talked about working with NATO. They didn't call it by name, but it's what I perceive from the conversation there. And that Turkey was going to work with them to launch an attack to take back Crimea and eastern Ukraine. It looks like eastern Ukraine is the first staging point and that NATO will have their back when they do. Guys, this is not a game. It's not a joke. If you have ties to get this type of broadcast out to anyone, whether it be Alex Jones, whoever it may be, please do so. Anyone that can get this broadcast up on a, on a global level to where maybe this will not be a war, but as Yeshua, Jesus Christ himself said, a rumor of war. I'm hoping it's going to be a rumor and not the real deal. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.